Morant with a running start. Elevate! Oh, oh, it does! Oh, oh my goodness! Oh. He's done tie game in overtime. Gasol will turn his heat. It's gone! It's on top. Seven tenths remain. Only now with three. Count it! A 15 point play for Memphis. And Blake Griffin gets into it on the floor with Randolph. Hard to tell if there are any punches being thrown under there, but Griffin took exception. Adams going long. Morant! Oh, he hit it! He hit it! He hit it! John Morant gets 70! You gotta be kidding me. Welcome to Grits and Grinds, a Memphis Grizzlies podcast. My name is Keith Parrish. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about the last two preseason games. The Grizzlies played the Hawks on the road last Thursday, and then on Sunday, they took on the Miami Heat. Both of these games were on the road. The Grizzlies lost both of the games, but we don't really care about the one-loss aspect of these games. We care about the things we saw in them. And honestly, between these two games, we got a lot of information. We saw some really good performances, and they also gave us uh, some things to think about and talk about as they shuffled the rotation around once again. But before we get into all of it, I just wanted to let all of you know, if you want to play fantasy basketball with me this season in either a regular categories fantasy league or in my proprietary negative fantasy basketball league. Uh, The deadline to sign up and do so is this Saturday. My fantasy leagues are available only to my Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash fast break breakfast. So if you want to support this show, you want to play fantasy basketball with me, go to patreon.com slash fast break breakfast for $5 a month. Not only will you get invited to the fantasy basketball leagues, but you get Bonus content, you get bonus episodes. You also can join the Slack channel and talk about the Grizzlies with me whenever you want. And of course, most importantly, you help support the creation of this show. So if you like the show, if you want to play fantasy basketball with me, um, do it all at patreon.com slash fastbreakbreakfast. And again, current Patreon supporters, go and sign up. Make sure you're signed up. The deadline to sign up to play fantasy basketball with me and other listeners is this coming Saturday. All right. There are a lot of things I think worth mentioning from these two preseason games. I'm going to throw out the bullet points because uh, I'm worried I'll be too scattered if I don't. Uh, The big bullet points from both of these games. At the Hawks game, uh, I think we would highlight that Santi Aldama had a huge game. Gigi Jackson scored a ton of points in that one. That's fun to see from the NBA's youngest player. Uh, Zaire Williams hit his first four three-pointers against the Hawks, continuing his strong play. And then Vince Williams Jr. made his preseason debut against the Hawks and looked incredible. Uh, at least incredible to me. Yes, he was one for eight on his three-pointers, but everything else was really, really strong. And my... Uh, Vince Williams Jr. hype train is definitely already out of control. And then in this Sunday game against the Heat, I think uh, the biggest thing is that David Roddy started. And this is a game where Luke Kennard was available, where Zaire Williams was available. Both those guys played, but they went with David Roddy. So our third different starter at the small forward position, or as that mystery fifth starter that we're waiting to see who it's going to be on opening night. So David Roddy got the start. Also Desmond Bain and Jaron, they got the night off against the Hawks against the heat. They still look incredible. Uh, Great games from them. Zaire had an unbelievably good second quarter and turned in yet another very strong preseason performance. And then I think we would uh, probably emphasize there's still no Marcus smart. So, Those are the bullet points. Now let's get maybe a little bit more into those details. Speaking of Marcus Smart, Mike Wallace from Grind City Media said that Taylor Jenkins said before the Heat game that Marcus Smart is trending to play in Friday's preseason game. The Grizzlies' final preseason game is against the Milwaukee Bucks. Yes, a a rematch 
against Milwaukee, who they already faced in this preseason. But it looks like he's trending to play, so hopefully we get to see Marcus Smart make his Grizzlies debut this Friday. By the way, if you're uh, around on Friday night for that preseason game, please join me over at playback.tv slash fastbreakbreakfast. You can watch the game along with me and other Grizzlies fans there. you got to have a league pass to be able to log in and watch on playback now. But join me there for the Bucks game, and fingers crossed for Marcus Smart's debut. Now, going back to the Hawks game, against the Hawks on Thursday, um, they did not have Desmond Bain. They didn't have Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, Luke Kennard got the night off. Uh, Xavier Tillman got the night off. Derek Rose got the night off. Uh, John Conchar didn't play in that one. He also didn't play in the game against the Bucks, And then he didn't play on Sunday. I'm confused about what's going on with Conchar. Uh, someone said on Twitter he's not with the team. I haven't seen anything official about that if he didn't make the road trip. Um, I'm a little confused uh, why Conchar hasn't played in three straight games. And I'm also confused uh, how hard it is to get information about uh, the NBA players and things. There's like, uh, I didn't see Taylor Jenkins' pre- and post-game press conferences posted anywhere online. Um, there's no official injury reports for preseason games. So I have no idea why Contra hasn't played. But in the game last Thursday against the Hawks, the Grizzlies started Jacob Gilliard, and Zaire Williams, David Roddy, Santi Aldama, and Steven Adams. So Steven Adams has played now in two preseason games as he ramps up. He was given the Sunday off against the Heat, so I guess we would probably see him on Friday. I would think we might see a full dress rehearsal on Friday just because if we see Marcus Smart's debut and Steven Adams, if he is in fact ramping up for the preseason, you would think they would maybe give him some more game minutes. So if Marcus Smart and Steven Adams play... Might as well play Derrick Rose and Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr. and give them maybe one half to uh, build a little bit of on-court chemistry. But against the Hawks, you know, they didn't play their normal players. It devolved quickly into uh, basically the Memphis hustle. You had first-half lineups that featured... Shaq Harrison and Gigi Jackson and Matthew Hurt. Like, Matthew Hurt played in the first quarter of an NBA game. By the way, Matthew Hurt no longer on the Grizzlies. Uh, Matthew Hurt and Michael Mulder were waived uh, on Monday morning as the Grizzlies shuffled around their training camp roster and basically built the Memphis Hustle roster. I would guess Hurt and Michael Mulder were gonna, are going to play a bunch on the Hustle this year. And then the Grizzlies signed Timmy Allen, who you might remember played Summer League for the Grizzlies. They also signed Jason Preston, Jason Preston was drafted by the Clippers. He has a little bit of NBA experience. He was, fun fact, drafted three picks after Santi Aldama. He was also drafted two picks after Isaiah Todd, who, of course, the Grizzlies uh, traded for this offseason. Or he got traded to the Grizzlies, and then they cut him before training camp. But the game against the Hawks, you know, you saw a lot of odd lineups and really deep cut rotation players, but it was still pretty fun because of how well Santi Aldama played. Santi Aldama had 22 points, seven rebounds, and six assists. He was racking up the assists in the first quarter. Yeah, some of them was because he was just throwing it to guys who were hitting three-pointers, specifically Zaire Williams. Again, Zaire Williams made his first four three-pointers in the game against the Hawks. He only played 15 minutes but scored 12 points. But, like, Santi really demonstrating his unique skill set in this game. Uh, and the flair with Santi's passing continued against the Heat. I mean, he had some unbelievably creative and fun passes. So Santi really flashing his unique skill set. He had a nice performance against the Hawks. Zaire kept it going, like I said, with that three-point shooting. Um, David Roddy, I think, played pretty well against the Hawks. It's, it's hard to judge. Like, the overall team takeaway from the game against the Hawks is the Grizzlies shot a ton of three-pointers. A massive number of three-pointers. It was, I think they took 53 for the game. I guess I could pull up the box score. Um, yeah, it was 53 for the game. They made 16 threes. So not a good percentage. Only making 30% of their threes. But uh, the Grizzlies, because of that three-point shooting, hung with the Hawks team, the Hawks team that was playing most of its regular players. Uh, Trey Young, DeJounte Murray was out there. Clint Capella was out there. Um, 
But then eventually, I think the overall talent of the Hawks won out, and they built a pretty good cushion until the fourth quarter where the Grizzlies made it a game and ended up being a very, very close game. Gigi Jackson uh, had 10 of his 24 points in the fourth quarter. I mean, he had, I guess, he had 21 of his points in the second half. It was an interesting game from Gigi. He showed, I think, what made him a tantalizing prospect, the moves with his size, and he ended up making four three-pointers um, on 11 attempts, but he had some atrocious moments in this game. His first quarter, his first three shots, it was two air balls and one kind of ill-advised pull-up three-pointer, but, you know, whatever. He's 18. We're just looking for any glimpses, and scoring 24 points, even if it took him 23 shots, I'm not going to get too worked up about it. Um, Gilliard in the starting role finished with 10 assists, so impressive job from Jacob Gilliard as a table setter. Uh, Gilliard's had a very fine preseason. He made two three-pointers against the Heat. I think one of the things you're asking, or one of the main things you asked from Gilliard this preseason is like, hey, we got to see some three-pointers go in. And, you know, I think he's done what's been asked of him. He's made five out of 12 three-pointers this preseason. That's 42%. So, I mean, obviously it's extremely small sample size with only 12 attempts, but he has been shooting those threes. So, I mean, good job for Jacob Gilliard holding on to that two-way spot. I think most of us, everyone who covers the Grizzlies like months ago, we assumed, all right, they'll probably do something else with that spot, especially because of the uh, extreme need at point guard you think the Grizzlies would have um, while John Morant is suspended. And I think this probably means they are comfortable with Jacob Gilliard being, being that emergency point guard for the regular season. And a lot of that is because he's actually stepped up and made threes. He didn't make threes against the Hawks, only one out of five. But every other game, do the math, that's four out of seven from three in every other game. And in Summer League, he made a decent percentage of his three-pointers, even if it does feel like a lot of times it takes him a long time to get those three-pointers up. Now, Steven Adams, uh, he played 15 minutes in the game against the Hawks, finished with five points and five rebounds. Three of those five rebounds were on the offensive glass. One overall issue, big picture issue, that we've seen for the Grizzlies this entire preseason and in every single preseason game, they're losing the rebounding battle. Now, Stevens only played, what, like a total of 28 minutes in the preseason, and I haven't really filtered out the uh, Steven on-off numbers in the preseason, but the Grizzlies have lost the rebounding battle in every single preseason game. They've lost the second chance scoring battle in every single preseason game. Now, taking a lot of conclusions from the Hawks game because of the people who played and did not play doesn't really make a ton of sense. Who really cares? But I think against the Heat, you look at the Heat game where the Grizzlies made a ton of three-pointers and actually shot a good percentage. The Grizzlies had 14 three-pointers through three quarters. They finished with 19 three-pointers. They only turned the ball over eight times for the whole game against the Heat, just four times through the first three quarters when, like, the regular players were playing. And despite that, they lost. And a lot of that was the Heat doubled them up on second-chance scoring. I mean, the Heat shot 57%, which is incredible. They also doubled them up on second-chance scoring, beat them on rebounding. Like, you don't want to give up more offensive rebounds than you get to a team that shoots 57%. Like, if you're shooting that well, you have way fewer misses on the offensive end to get, and you still end up with more offensive rebounds than your opponent, that's not great. I mean, the flip side is, the Grizzlies made 19 three-pointers and only turned the ball over eight times and lost. Those are not normal statistics for a Grizzlies loss. But Steven Adams, obviously, has been the key for the Grizzlies being a good rebounding team. We saw that last year, and that still is kind of an issue. Now, sort of intertwined with the Grizzlies rebounding issues, and a thing I really loved about the Hawks game was my guy Vince Williams Jr., who I know I'm biased because he's just the kind of player I like. I mean, frankly, when uh, I had my friend uh, and draft expert Brian Schroeder on the show uh, weeks before Vince Williams was drafted— Brian recognized Vince Williams Jr. as a Grizzlies type player. They should get in the second round or picked him up or pick him up if he's undrafted. And I was like, oh, this guy sounds like the kind of guy I like. 
defense, deflections, steals, blocks, does everything. The offense is a question mark. I'm like, oh, those are the guys I, I get enamored with. And, well, here, here we are. I am enamored with Vince Williams Jr. After what he did in Summer League, after the stats he put up for the hustle last year, I was like, this guy could be the answer. And a lot of that was the question marks around, you know, Roddy or LaRavia or Zaire Williams. Well, Vince, I mean, basically showed me everything in this game against the Hawks. I was actually extremely disappointed he didn't get to play against the Heat to see if he would follow up. So Vince Williams Jr. came in, immediately got a deflection, immediately got a block. He also was firing three-pointers, and that's been the issue. He made three-pointers in Summer League. He made three-pointers on the hustle. He did not make three-pointers for the Grizzlies last year. He did not make three-pointers in this game against the Hawks on Thursday. Only one out of eight on three-pointers. But if you throw out the three-pointers, everything else is delightful. Three blocks, one steal, three assists, and nine rebounds. That's the key here. Vince Williams Jr. has great rebounding numbers. And it's been a part or a feature of his game as he rebounds the ball very, very well. And that is an extreme need, in my mind, for this Grizzlies roster. So seeing Vince show up and continue in that same vein that he did in Summer League, which is getting a lot of rebounds, making the hustle, the defensive plays. He got five deflections. I mean, five deflections, three blocks, one steal. And also, he can credit Taylor Jenkins with helping him get credited for the third block. Taylor Jenkins had to challenge a foul call on Vince. Uh, I believe it was on Kobe Bufkin, the Hawks rookie, where Vince Williams did block him. It was called a foul. Taylor Jenkins challenged and won. Oh, by the way, Taylor Jenkins, four for four on challenges this preseason. At least I'm pretty sure he's four for four. I don't know if there's one I missed. Um, but of course, he was two for two in that first preseason game. And then he uh, won a challenge on that Vince Williams Jr. block against the Hawks. And then he won a challenge on Sunday against the Heat on a Desmond Bain and one layup, where initially it was called an offensive foul on Desmond Bain. He challenged it. It was overturned and became a three-point play for Desmond. So Taylor Jenkins absolutely on fire with the challenge calls so far in the preseason. But all that was basically me gushing over how good Vince Williams Jr. looked in the game against the Hawks. And so, yes, I was disappointed he didn't play against the Heat, but you know what helped that disappointment? It was watching Zaire Williams be amazing. Zaire Williams did not get the start on Sunday. And actually, let's talk about that. I guess that's a bigger story. Most of the Grizzlies' regular players were available and played against the Heat. Just Steven Adams set out. And they started David Roddy. I think a lot of our assumptions before the preseason began, was, all right, it's probably going to be Kennard to be the fifth starter if Marcus Smart, if Desmond Bain, if Jaron Jackson Jr., if Steven Adams are all available. Those four guys are going to start, and then the fifth one, who's it going to be? We thought, all right, it's probably Luke Kennard. He's the best player in a vacuum among all, all the options. Well, then Zaire got the start in the second game, looked great. He also looked good off the bench in the first game. And then Zaire hit threes against the Hawks, and you're like, Zaire's playing great. And so you're like, maybe it is just a... Uh, a two-man race between Luke Kennard and Zaire Williams. And because of Zaire's size, he just seems like he's perfect for the part if he can play well. And I've talked about that a lot. Like, all the lineups make sense if you can play Zaire at your three, and then it makes more sense to bring Kennard off the bench. You're not starting all these guards. You don't have all these undersized lineups. So we're like, all right, so it's probably Zaire's played so well in these first few games. It's, it's probably down to Kennard and Zaire. Well, I don't know if they'd made up their minds before the preseason started. I'm guessing they had, that they would try Roddy as a starter because of Roddy's contributions on the court last year. And so they did. And Roddy played fine, although uh, Taylor Jenkins did call a timeout one minute into the Heat game. Uh, and I think it might have been because David Roddy didn't get back on defense and the Grizzlies conceded like a run-out layup by Tyler Hero. Um, after a missed three-pointer. So I don't know if that was Roddy's fault. It's a little, it's noticeable when a coach calls a timeout one minute into a preseason game. He's clearly not seeing something he wants. Um, I don't know if it was Roddy's fault or not, but I was just highly attuned trying to watch for what was going on and what Roddy was doing. And Roddy ended up with a pretty good game. He had uh, three made three-pointers against 
the Heat, he uh, cut down on his turnovers. He had an ugly five turnover game against the Hawks in the previous one. But, like, Roddy, you know, was pretty good. He's moving the ball around, got two assists. Um, but Zaire played so well, and now we're like, where are we on this fifth starter? And what do we know about this fifth starter? Are we back to the square one? Like, we thought it was Kennard, and then they played Kennard, and then we thought it was Zaire because Zaire's been so incredible. But then they, they gave Roddy a shot. I don't know. Um, and like, then there always was the Conchar thing and Conchar has been unavailable. So maybe like Conchar is not in consideration. Reminder, in the first preseason game against the Pacers, Conchar was the first sub in off the bench. In the second half of that first preseason game, when Derek Rose did not play in the second half, Conchar started the second half. So like, are we considering that as like, all right, Conchar, actually got a chance to play too. Another thing that I haven't really considered that I guess I will just go ahead and say out loud is are we ignoring Derrick Rose in all of this? Like we've always assumed it was going to be Marcus Smart and Desmond Bain starting. Well, Derrick Rose has started three games so far. Could the fifth starter be Derrick Rose? Could they start Derrick Rose and Marcus Smart and Desmond Bain, if everybody's healthy. Like we always thought, and I've been operating under the assumption, Derrick Rose is your backup point guard. He's only playing because of Marcus Smart not being available and, of course, of the John Morant suspension. Well, when once Ja comes back, I think a lot of us, we've thought the Grizzlies are going to start John Morant, Desmond Bain, and Marcus Smart one through three. Well, if that's the case, is there an argument to be made? Go ahead and start Derrick Rose. And I don't think that's the case. I think we are, we have been correct in trying to debate between Kennard and Zaire and Roddy and maybe Conchar. By the way, Jake Laravia, nowhere to be seen in this conversation. Definitely uh, not in consideration for the spot. But have we been sleeping on the idea of Taylor Jenkins wanting to start Derrick Rose? And it could be Derrick Rose and... Desmond Bain and Marcus Smart, who start alongside Jaron Jackson Jr. and Steven Adams. By the way, Derek Rose, uh, I thought he had a really good second game despite only making one out of five shots because he was passing the ball really, really well. Once again, pretty good distributing. Once again, uh, one out of five from the field. So since that awesome scintillating 13-point half in his preseason debut, Derrick Rose is just 2 out of 10 on his field goal attempts and his subsequent two appearances. But this question, the question over who starts, who knows? No idea. Totally lost. I would say Zaire's now the favorite just because of how he's played in every single game. Like on Sunday, had a 15-point second quarter. And in that second quarter, I mean, he showed the entire multitude of things you want to see from him. He drove towards the basket. Defense collapsed on him, and he found a wide-open Desmond Bain in the corner for a wide-open corner three. He made several three-pointers. He had a follow dunk on a fast-break chance where, where Derrick Rose overlaid the basketball, and Zaire comes flying in for the offensive rebound putback. He scored off the dribble where he beat two guys off the dribble for an and one. For me, that's the best play he made. It was spectacular. He was handling the ball out at midcourt, got past a defender, help came, he absorbed the contact, made the shot. I mean, he was tremendous. And if the objective for Zaire Williams was to, hey, go win the job in preseason, what more could you hope for? I mean, he was so good in all of these preseason games. He finishes the game on Sunday with 19 points, uh, 17 of those in the first half, of course, 15 in the second quarter. He makes four more three-pointers. He's four out of five on three-pointers. So he made eight three-pointers over the last two preseason games. That matches the most three-pointers he's ever made over any two-game span in his career near the end of the 2022 season, uh, he had back-to-back games where he made uh, a total of eight threes over a two-game span. The guy has been awesome. And I, 
I still am dubious he can keep this up because if he keeps this up, I mean, he's like, all of a sudden, a lot of the Grizz's questions are answered and he looks to be a very promising 22-year-old. Um, I hope that's the case. Of course, I hope that's the case, but um, sure, it's probably going to back off a little, like how good he's looked, but he's done, I think, everything you've asked of him. He's been so comfortable handling the basketball and then if he's making three-pointers, I don't know how you go with anything else. Also, I think part of it is I, I'm not, I like Roddy, but I'm not the biggest fan of Roddy. And if you start Roddy, like we saw it in the first half against the Heat, if you start Roddy, he plays these two like seven-minute stints, like 14 minutes and a half for Roddy, that's high for me. I don't think Roddy's good enough compared to the other options on the team where like I want to give 14 minutes of a 24-minute half to David Roddy. Maybe I'm wrong there, too. Maybe Roddy deserves all those minutes, but I'd rather, I think, distribute those minutes elsewhere. And um, with how Zaire Williams is playing, uh, that is probably where I would look. Um, but, of course, maybe we'll have a better answer. I mean, on Friday, will they try something totally new? I don't know. I, I would think Zaire has excelled enough in this preseason that he might have earned himself that first look when the regular season opens uh, next Wednesday against the Pelicans that he gets to be the starter. All right. Uh, let's talk about, again, oh, I'm focused on the minutia. I should go big picture. I should talk about how good Desmond Bain is and the rest of the guys, and we'll do that right after this short break. Hey there, guys. I just want to tell you that, once again, Underdog Fantasy has extended their new user sign-up bonus where they will match your opening deposit up to $500. That is up from their previous $100 opening deposit match. So I wanted you guys to know the opportunity when you use that promo code FBBF or click the link in this episode's description that Underdog Fantasy will match your opening deposit up to $500. Also, it will give you a free higher or lower pick if you are in one of those states where that is legal. By the way, uh, on vacation last week in North Carolina, I was in one of those states where higher or lower was legal, and it was a lot of fun making those picks, watching along on Thursday night football with some money on the line. So if you want to play fantasy sports for money, if you want to get involved when the NBA season starts with their daily fantasy, with your unique fantasy games for money, try out Underdog Fantasy. And again, use that promo code FBBF, and they will match your opening deposit up to five hundred dollars. All right, against the Heat, the Grizzlies were led by Desmond Bain, who scored twenty six points in only twenty five minutes of playing time. He made four out of eight three pointers for the preseason. He's making. 50% of his threes, his per 30 minute averages, again, not per 36, his per 30 minute averages in the preseason, he's at 25.9 points, 5.3 rebounds, and 4.9 assists. Once again, that's what I expect him to average through the first 25 games while John Rant's on the shelf. Maybe he does it for the whole year. Maybe he's 25, 5, and 5 all season, but that's why I expect from Desmond Bain um, just scoring in so many different ways. Um, getting to that right-handed layup where he blows by the defender and uses his shoulders and arms uh, to create some space and get that up, and then just you know hitting the shots and and really um, damaging the defense. And then Jaron, I mean Jaron played well. Jaron with 14 points, six rebounds, an assist, a steal, and a block. Jaron's per 30-minute averages in the preseason: 19.9 points, 6.5 rebounds, two assists, which is good. That's up for me. Um, he's passing the ball well. They, they also are using him a little bit more as a ball handler, and we've seen a couple of inverted pick and rolls where he is the ball handler in the pick and roll situation. And so there are they are using him a little bit differently on offense, and uh, Jaron has responded so far. His post moves have looked very, very strong. His finishing in the paint has been great. He's been making three-pointers. All of these things are great signs. Also, by the way, Averaging 3.7 blocks per 30 minutes, 1.2 steals per 30 minutes. So those are, once again, defensive player of the year numbers. Now, as far as the overall team offense, I think something that's notable so far through the four preseason games is the Grizzlies are shooting a whole lot of three-pointers. 
and they aren't really doing a great job at making them. Yes, Desmond Bain is making them. Yes, Jaron Jackson Jr. is making them. Yes, good job, Jacob Gilliard. He has knocked down his three-pointers. Everybody else, kind of squirrely. Oh, excuse me, Zaire Williams. Zaire Williams drilling some three-pointers. But overall, the team not shooting a great percentage, but they are shooting a lot of them. Right now, they're averaging 458 Eight three-point attempts per game in the preseason. That is the fifth most three-pointers per game in the NBA. Uh, if you throw out the non-NBA teams, if we throw out Real Madrid. Um, they shot more in their one game. But uh, the Grizzlies launching 46 threes per game, um, and that is way up. And I don't know if that's just kind of random. There's a lot, I think a little bit of noise with that Hawks game where they took 53. A lot of the regular players weren't playing. So they are shooting a lot of three-pointers. Um, one guy who's not making them is Luke Kennard. Luke Kennard is only 2 out of 12 on three-pointers this preseason. He missed all five of his three-point attempts against the Heat on Sunday. Now, small sample size caveat, you know, maybe it doesn't matter at all. Maybe an excuse or a reason could be that he's on the ball a little bit more. He ended up being more of a primary ball handler in the lineups he was in on Sunday or like it looked like basically he was the point guard in a lot of these lineups. And for whatever reason, uh, Luke Kennard hasn't made his three pointers so far. And it's kind of interesting to me, like when I think about the race or the competition to be that Grizzlies fifth starter, like I don't really blame Luke Kennard for missing shots. Like if you just looked at who has the best stats in the preseason between Zaire and Kennard and Roddy, well, it's obviously Zaire, and Kennard's he has the worst stats. But like, I think most of us we like we know who Luke Kennard is, and we're like, oh, I don't, I don't care what Luke Kennard's stats are. But it, maybe it's not fair that we do care what Roddy and Zaire's stats are. I guess that maybe it's natural when a guy you consider him to be a proven uh, NBA player, you don't have to worry about the shots not going in. But for whatever reason, Luke Kennard not making his shots uh, at the proper rate in the preseason. Um, Let's look a little more at the rotation for the Heat game. It was a little bit interesting because the Grizzlies played nine players in the first half, so it was not a 10-man rotation. After starting Rose and Bain and Roddy and then Aldama and Jackson, I guess it is notable that they started Aldama. You would think if Steven Adams is unavailable, you know, Tillman would get a consideration for starting, much like he did in the postseason when uh, Adams was unavailable, or for most of the end of last season, they went with Tillman. But in this one, they left in Aldama um, to play alongside Jaron, and I thought they looked pretty nice. Although the Grizzlies' defense overall, again, not super good. Um, you can point to the field goal percentage of the Heat. You can point to Tyler Hero destroying everyone. And maybe it is notable that like Tyler Hero was amazing, scored 30 points against the Grizzlies. Also, by the way, Trey Young, also totally amazing, cooked the Grizzlies in his, like, what, he played like 15 minutes and scored 18 points or something. Um, he looked amazing. And so the Grizzlies are getting torched a little bit on the outside, and their overall team defense not that great. Um, maybe none of that really matters in, in preseason. But uh, once you went to the bench, you had Luke Kennard come in first, and he came in for Derrick Rose. So we had a lot of Luke Kennard and Desmond Bain as the only two guards on the court. And I don't know if that is best for Luke Kennard. He might be best served playing alongside um, a point guard. Um, and Desmond Bain, while he can handle the ball, not a traditional like pass first point guard. So maybe Luke Kennard is struggling a little bit, finding his rhythm, finding his shots, um, not playing with a traditional point guard. But then you had Zaire and Xavier come in. You briefly had this lineup. I like it pretty well of Luke Kennard, Desmond Bain, Zaire, Santi, and Xavier. Of course, you're leaning on Desmond Bain a lot on that one. And then they they cycled in Derrick Rose and Jaron Jackson Jr., kind of similarly to how they did in the Bucks game where Derrick and Jaron came in in the first into the first quarter, but it was notable to me that they hadn't yet played another wing player, like a, a fourth wing or, or depending how you're counting the players. Like, yeah, we've had Kennard come in as a backup guard and normally it's like it's a Zaire. And then it also would be Conchar who comes in, but Jaron and Derek came back in early. So they finished the first quarter with Derek Rose, Luke Kennard, Zaire, Jaron and Xavier. Again, I'm big fans of that lineup. And then in the second quarter, they brought Kenneth Lofton jr. In now I haven't mentioned much about Kenneth Lofton jr. Um, 
I feel like he's boxing out well, but the Grizzlies are getting killed on the glass whenever he's out there. Uh, they're also getting killed basically uh, on defense whenever he's out there. They're giving up tons and tons of points. It was very notable in this one. Um, you had a lineup uh, that I wasn't a huge fan of at, at the near the end of the second quarter where it was Luke Kennard, Desmond Bain, David Roddy, Santi, and Kenneth Lawton Jr. And that's just a lot to ask um, defensively. There's, once again, no rim protection. There's very, very little rebounding. And they were struggling. And then, like, it was night and day when Zaire Williams and Jaron Jackson Jr. checked in. Jaron came in for Kenneth Lawton Jr. Zaire came in for David Roddy. And all of a sudden, bang, the team took off, looked awesome. And then they finished the first half against the Heat with Derrick Rose, Desmond Bain, Zaire, Jaron, and Xavier. And now, everything looks better when your three-pointers go in. So maybe it was just that. Zaire was playing unbelievably well. Desmond Bain was hitting some shots. And because of all that, like everything really came together. And all of a sudden, the Grizzlies went on a big run to finish the first half. But uh, what happened did match up kind of to what my immediate gut reaction was where I was like, oh, I don't like this lineup. And those people who were in the playback with me on Sunday, I'm like, I don't like this lineup. And then you put in Jaron and Zaire and all of a sudden, oh, this makes a lot of sense. And um, I thought that was notable. Also at the end of the game where the Heat, I mean, again, it was the Heat second stringers against the Grizzlies second stringers, but the Heat ran away with this one. The Grizzlies were ahead by the time Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr. checked out. They, they were up. They, they were winning you know, late in the third quarter. The fourth quarter is where it really got out of hand. Although the defensive slippage had already begun, the Grizzlies gave up 40 points to the Heat in the third quarter. They ended up giving up 74 to the Heat in the second half. So obviously the defense wasn't there. But again, it was the Grizzlies playing uh, the Aldama Lawton Jr. front court with like Roddy the three. Uh, repeating myself, no rim protection, um, not very good rebounding, and I think the point of attack defense was also kind of lacking. And then you sprinkle in all those second chance opportunities the Grizzlies were allowing, and that's how you end up giving up so many points and end up losing a game where you hit a lot of threes and take care of the basketball. Now, uh, wrapping up, I think I've mentioned basically everyone who played these episodes where I'm covering two games, I always get all over the place. Oh, I guess it was notable that not only did Conchar not play, where we, maybe he's not with the team, but they did not go to any of the normal bench players like Gigi Jackson or Vince Williams Jr. or Jake LaRavia. They kind of went straight to maybe the deeper cut G League guys. I think some of that maybe was because, as we found out on Monday, they were getting cut. So they gave Matthew Hurt and Michael Mulder a last opportunity to play with the Grizzlies. Um, Shaq Harrison came in and played, and um, maybe that means he's not uh, long for this team. I'm only basing that on the fact that I was surprised he came in ahead of Vince Williams Jr. and uh, Matt Hurt and Michael Mulder, the other two guys who came in a little bit to my surprise, got cut uh, a few hours ago. So, Maybe something to keep our eye on. Um, anyways, I'll wrap it up there. Whatever I left out, I'll try to make it up to you on an episode later this week. Uh, reminder, if you're one of my Patreon supporters, to go ahead and fill out uh, the fantasy basketball form if you want to get signed up in one of my fantasy basketball leagues. If you're not a Patreon supporter and you want to play fantasy basketball with me, go to patreon.com slash fastbreakbreakfast. The fantasy basketball deadline is this coming Saturday October 21st. Uh, remember that promo code FBBF at Underdog Fantasy. They've got that big sign-up bonus for new users. All right. Hope you guys are having a great Monday. I'll talk to you soon. Go Grizz.